So the study of flora and fauna has always been an important part of my research. And throughout the years, I've explained many things like peanuts and bees that originated in the Americas, even cocaine that originated in South America, yet they were brought to Africa thousands of years ago. And I've also explained various other crops like cotton, yams, carrots, and onions, and so forth that originated in Africa, yet they were brought to the Americas thousands of years ago. So the study of flora and fauna allows us to see how the ancestors traveled and the crops that they brought with them. So today I want to explain the history of the horse because it's a very important part of who we are as black people and where we've been. So where do horses come from? According to Scientific America, the first horses originated in North America. Then they were introduced to Asia, Europe, and Africa. And scientists have found the oldest evidence of modern day North American horses in Idaho. The remains that were found were estimated to be 3.5 million years old. So scientists claim that all horses in North America became extinct 10,000 years ago, and then they were reintroduced by colonizing Europeans. So white people want us to believe that they brought thousands of horses to North America and then gave them to the Native Americans so that they could use them in battle against the very same invading white men who supposedly gave them the horses in the first place. The only problem with this ridiculous part of white history is that it's simply not true. The horses in North America never went extinct. They originated in North America and they were still in North America when white people arrived. It's a common theme amongst white historians to rewrite history in such a way that glorifies the white man, giving him credit for things that he never actually did. Another prime example of this is the bee. Just like the horse, the bee originated in America, but white people claim that it was white explorers who reintroduced the bee to North America, once again giving the white man credit for something that had already been in the Americas for a hundred million years, according to scientists. And this is a 5,000-year-old hieroglyph from the 5th dynasty of Egypt showing the bee. So we can see the 5,000-year-old connection that the Egyptians had to the land of North America. And if we look at this stella belonging to Tutankhamun, there are three important clues in this stella that show us not only the ancient Egyptian connection to North America and to Africa, but also to Europe as well. So you'll notice that Tutankhamun has not only horses that are native to North America, but he also has greyhound dogs. And I've shown you guys before that the greyhound dog is native to Europe, specifically in England. And the last thing that you'll notice is at the bottom of the stella, there is a row of symbols. And this symbol resembles some sort of flower. But you'll notice that this particular symbol can also be found in old buildings all over Europe, even in old churches that were built in North America. So horses and chariots were a very important part of Egyptian and Kushite culture because they were used in warfare. And we can find evidence all over Africa, Europe, and Asia that document the Egyptian and Kushite use of the horse and chariot for thousands of years. Here we have black people riding horses in medieval Europe. And this is a black king in Lisbon in the 1500s. And here we have black people riding horses in Greece. And this is an Iron Age chariot that was found with the horse and its rider in Europe. And these are the horses and chariots of the Sumerians in the so-called Middle East. And these artifacts are from Iran in 900 BC, showing two horses. And here's another horse and chariot from Iran, and the horse is pulling what appears to be the sun or a planetary body. And then we have the ancient Egyptian horse and chariot, along with other artifacts that can be found showing the North American horse in Egypt thousands of years ago, along with what is called Solomon's stables. So I've explained in the real faces of the Bible that the biblical King Solomon is actually Amenhotep III. 
and Amenhotep III had a huge complex that is now located underneath of the Temple Mount, and this complex was used to house thousands of North American horses, and these horses were part of the Egyptian army. And here are ancient Sumerians with their chariot and horses from the kingdom of Anatolia. And here are ancient artifacts from China showing their horses and their chariots. And we can look at this 2400 year old horse and chariot that was excavated in China. So even the first people to inhabit Asia after the flood had horses just like all of the black civilizations of Europe and Africa. More importantly, the horse is native to North America. So when we see all of the ancient black civilizations of Europe, Asia, and Africa with their horses thousands of years ago, we know where they got them from.